Welcome back into my Philadelphia Eagles rebuild in this community rebuild series with Headstrong. His link will be down in the description below if you'd like to check him out. But we are going to start this video off by just going over the team heading into the 2021 NFL season. So this past offseason was very eventful. I had to let a lot of players go. I had traded a few of them away. We added some new players. And also, the draft was terrible. There really weren't any good players who I really uh, was in a position to take. Like, we got a couple hidden development guys. Uh, but for the most part, the draft wasn't really, you know, that crazy. Um, but the team right now is an 84 overall, 84 offense, 84 defense. We still have Carson Wentz starting at quarterback. He's an 86 overall. We recently traded for Kareem Hunt. He's 26 years old, so we can probably get like three or four really solid years out of him. I definitely don't mind the trade. We got rid of Miles Sanders and like a third round draft pick, I believe, in order to get Kareem Hunt, but I definitely think it was more than worth it. And then Jalen Rager is the number one receiver on the team. I am going to sign another receiver right now in free agency but i'm gonna do that after i talk about the team but jalen rager and arthago whiteside will get the majority of the targets here the guy i'm gonna sign is just gonna be like the third receiver who really won't be involved all that much i just want somebody else and then on the offensive line andre dillard is still starting at left tackle i do want to replace him at some point in the future but i don't really have the personnel to do that right now brandon brooks and lane johnson are at least still here so that's nice to see we have a really good right side of the offensive line still and then we have dante hodge starting at center isaac sayamalo i don't really want on the team too much longer but i don't want to cut him just yet because i don't really have that great of a replacement we could start parks actually anthony parks but i think i'm just going to keep samalo for the time being dallas goddard is going to be the starting tight end for this season no longer do we have zach Ertz, so it's time for dallas goddard to shine and then defensively we were actually able to sign a couple free agents lamarcus joiner joins the team he's going to be the starting strong safety for the next couple of seasons we got him for like three years but his contract is very very small so i think he was definitely worth the contract cameron hayward we also got for not much money he's a 91 overall at defensive tackle that's where he's going to be playing for the next little while now javon hargrave i don't want on the team i couldn't really find a trade partner for him and he is fairly expensive so i am going to be releasing javon hargrave it'll free up some money maybe i'll go ahead and sign another defensive tackle in free agency or something to replace him as the number three but we still have damon spikes on the team he was the first round selection from a year ago he's an 82 overall at left outside linebacker and then one of our selections from this past draft is Corey burr he's going to be starting at middle linebacker for us for this next season and hopefully he's a really good development trade. It would be crazy if it's like superstar. That'd be really, really awesome. But Davion Taylor is going to be starting at right outside linebacker then. Avante Maddox is going to be playing free safety because we drafted, I forgot your first name, Landon Allen in the first round. He's a 72 overall cornerback. He's really not good, but he will get some play time. Maybe he can play really well, go up in development potentially. That would be insane. But then big play Slay and Sidney Jones are the other two cornerbacks. Then we have Derek Barnett, Fletcher Cox, and Sal Palmer. That's your first name, right? Yeah, okay, Sal Palmer. To finish off the defense here. But this is the team, honestly, I don't know what to expect. We haven't really been too good so far, but maybe with the addition of a really good running back, this team can actually start to play well. We will be using the Bears playbook, though, for this season. The Bears have a very glitchy playbook in this game, and I'm hoping we can take advantage of that. The Titans playbook didn't work for us. They also have a really glitchy playbook, but maybe we'll get a different outcome here with the Bears. Let me go ahead and sign a wide receiver, though. I have a few guys I can choose from. Honestly, I think I'm just going to go with like the best receiver here. Honestly, though, Adam Humphreys plays pretty well in this game. Or maybe even Josh Reynolds. He's 26 years old. I'll go after Josh Reynolds. He's just going to be the third receiver on the team. I don't mind that whatsoever. But anyway, I will be back then at the end of the season to let you guys know what the record was all about. All right, so the season wasn't great once again. Um, we did not end up making the playoffs, but I do see something very interesting on this tab right here. I won't get too deep into it right now. We'll get into that later. But we finished 9-7, and seven, very close to making the playoffs. We also lost in Week 17. We got crushed, but if we could have won that game, we likely would have been in the playoffs. But the Cowboys are 10-6. and six. They make the playoffs from this division. 7-9 and nine for the Giants. 2-14 and 14 from the Redskins down there. Okay, well, let's check out these stats. Carson Wentz, about 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Honestly, he's not playing that well. I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of him at any point soon. I really don't know. I'll have to see what free agency looks like, and I'll have to see what the draft looks like and whatnot. Rushing wise though, Kareem Hunt was actually really solid this year. 1,100 yards, 4.3 yards per carry, 13 touchdowns for him. Four touchdowns for Carson Wentz is actually pretty solid. And then Linder gets seven. Antoine Linder, not too bad. Jalen Rager went off this year. 90 catches, 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns. He's probably going to be an X Factor after this. Arthago Whiteside, three touchdowns. Dallas Goddard, three touchdowns. Josh Reynolds gets four touchdowns. 
Caden Smith gets two. Someone else down there gets one. It's Antoine Linder. Okay. The offensive line actually seems pretty solid right now, but I am still looking to upgrade a tackle. I really want Andre Dillard to be a guard for us. I don't really want him playing tackle all that much longer. Defensively, then, we have 119 tackles for Corey Burr. We have 11 tackles for loss for Derek Barnett, 11 for Fletcher Cox, 10 for Cam Hayward. Seven sacks for Sal Palmer actually leads the team. He had a pick too, which is interesting. Six and a half for Fletcher Cox, six for Derek Barnett. We have five picks for Sidney Jones and five picks for Darius Slay. I really hope Sidney Jones goes up in development. He almost has 100 tackles, five interceptions. He could be defensive back of the year. One for Sal Palmer. We already saw that one. Corey Burr has one and then LaMarcus Joyner also got an interception. We have a touchdown there from Darius Slay. No safeties and we don't have any blocked kicks either. So we are 15th in the NFL on offense this year defensively we were 14th i'm also right behind lane on the legacy leaderboard hopefully i can pass him at some point yearly awards though the mvp goes to jalen hurts because of course it does i traded him to the ravens after the first season if you guys ended up missing that video it wasn't the best trade for me but i was never going to use jalen hurts so i figured i'd get something out of him i probably could have gotten like a second round draft pick but i got a third instead whatever anybody from the eagles on here no i don't see anyone nfc offensive player of the year christian mccaffrey Carson Wentz at number nine. Not too bad there. Also, Jalen Hurts went to a subscriber, so I'm perfectly fine with it. He's a cool dude. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald, who was on the Saints. When did that happen? The Saints dude's making a ton of plays, but still, when did that happen? Okay. Anybody from the Eagles, we actually have Corey Burr at number seven. He's up to an 82 overall. That's crazy. He was a 70. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Cedric Bird, but we do have Antoine Linder at number five. That's cool to see. Defensive rookie of the year goes to the linebacker. I love that. Landon Allen at number three as well. Okay, not too bad. Now, let's check out what the developments are of the players we drafted. I think we only have like one or two hidden development guys. One of those guys is the running back, and he has X-Factor. Antoine Linder has X-Factor. Huh. Now, I don't know what to do with him. I think he's going to progress very, very well. So, hang on a second. Kareem Hunt, how many years are left on your contract? You're also 27 years old. I feel like we should trade Kareem Hunt at some point soon. But, like, I really want Kareem Hunt. He's still a good player. He has two more years left on his contract. Honestly, I might try to ship him off. I know I keep changing my running backs, but I've been having trouble trying to find my long-term running back option. I think it might be Linder. He's only 22 years old, and I feel like he's going to go up incredibly well. Okay, well, that's actually really cool that we have an X-Factor running back. Rager is up to a 92 overall, and I think he's going to go up to X-Factor. He is incredible. Defensively, then, this middle linebacker has Superstar. That's what I was referring to earlier. You can see that he got a new ability on that front page. Superstar development. This guy was a 70 overall. Okay, that is awesome to see as well. So that last draft did not seem good, but we did very well with who we drafted. We had an X-Factor and a Superstar. That is is ridiculous i think i'm going to spend this on the running back upgrade because i feel like that guy will be like a 99 one day just because of his development trade but i will see you guys once again in the off season okay so i am now in free agency here and i apologize for the sound of my voice if it sounds kind of different because i literally just woke up like 20 minutes ago and i just wanted to make sure i could get some bids on some free agents before this week is advanced but we have 24 million dollars to spend okay so let's see who's available quentin nelson is the top free agent. Stefan Diggs is available. Tredavious White is available. DeForest Buckner. Okay. There are some insanely good free agents right now. Darius Leonard is here. Vita Vea. Richard Sherman. Dante Fowler is not getting any offers, which is really surprising. He's not bad. Braden Smith is here. Adrian Amos is available. Tremaine Edmonds is here. I don't know why he's not getting more than one offer. Tremaine Edmonds is incredibly good. I'm not really in dire need of linebacker. Actually, I could really use him for Davion Taylor, potentially. Let me not go after him yet. Let me just see who else is available. Josh Allen is here. He's really good in simulation. So there are some really, really solid players available right now. Jesse Bates is a player I'm interested in. He's not getting a ton of points right now, and he's still young. He's 25 years old. I will give him a contract, actually. I'm going to give him 100 total points. Maybe that'll be enough. I'm not exactly sure, but we actually have some money now, which makes me very happy. Ronnie Harrison's a player I wouldn't mind getting. Actually, I don't really need him right now. We saw LaMarcus Joyner for a couple more seasons. I don't really need Ronnie Harrison. Receiver's a pretty big deal on this team, though. I would love to go after Stefan Diggs. I just don't know if that's going to be possible. The Bears are giving him a lot of money, but I might still try. I don't have enough salary cap to give him a serious offer. That's kind of upsetting, but maybe we can find somebody else to go after. Dante Pettis isn't too bad. Anthony Miller's not awful. Auden Tate isn't actually that bad at all. He's an 81 overall star development. 
Steven Sims is star development there. Preston Williams is down here. He's 25. I think I'm going to go after Auden Tate. Maybe we can look to draft a receiver this year or something, but Auden Tate's not a bad option at all. I'm going to give him a pretty small contract for now. Maybe we can change this later. That's 77 total points. I'm good with that. I would love to get Quentin Nelson, but I just don't think that's going to be possible. If I can get him, I'd be really happy. Okay, so I don't have enough money right now to do this. Let me maybe take off the contract from Jesse Bates because I'd rather have Quentin Nelson than Jesse Bates on the team. I'm going to give him 104 total points. If we can get him, that would be absolutely massive. But I don't really expect to get him, if I'm being real here. I'm going to give a couple other really small contracts, just for now. Ryan Shazier is down at left end? Why? <laughs> that makes no sense. I'm going to give a bunch of other really small contracts, just to see if we can get anybody in these positions. Like, for example, I just went after uh, Sam Hubbard. Give him a really small deal. I'll probably do the same thing here to Dante Fowler. I, I was able to give him 31 points. I probably can't get that to go through with anybody else. But I'm actually okay with all the players we went after. It'd be really cool if we can get them. I don't really expect to, to be honest. Because I'm sure a bunch of other people are going to swoop in at the last minute and go after some of these guys. I can't believe Tredavious White is a free agent. And Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen. Like I don't know if the Bills have a user still. I know they did at one point. But what are they doing? got to bring back those players, man. Those guys are all so important. I really do want Jesse Bates, and it sucks that I probably can't get him. But we still do have Avante Maddox, who isn't too bad. I'm looking to draft a safety at some point. I haven't really looked at the draft class yet, though, to be honest. Sam Darnold's in free agency, too. I'm actually kind of surprised about that one. He normally doesn't play too poorly. It's crazy how there's, like, no good running backs here. Usually, there's a lot of good running backs when you do rebuilds and stuff at this point. But I think people are at least valuing running backs because they're actually really important in simulation tyler lockett's a player I actually would not mind having on the team at all i don't think i'm gonna really be able to give him a contract let me cut somebody maybe i can give him like a 40 point contract because tyler lockett would be really good under that small of a contract i think i'm actually going to release isaac sayamalo he's really not good anymore and it saves a little bit of money so i'm gonna do that even if we don't get quentin nelson i'm sure i can have somebody start at left guard who will be just as good sayamalo wasn't really that good to begin with but let me go ahead and see if i can at least give some sort of a contract to um tyler lockett i'm gonna give him 42 points that's i think the max i can do it'd be really nice if we can get him on the team i don't think we're going to especially for him i'm sure the titans guy will check this back and probably give him a new contract but maybe we can get Auden tate at least that would be nice i just want a decent receiver here i don't know who else to go after honestly kj hill i can go after he's only 25 years old i'm just looking for some young guys jacoby myers 74 no, I don't really think he's too worth it. Okay, well, I, that's good enough for now. At least maybe I can find some other players in the second rounds of free agency if we don't get some of these guys now. Okay, so we are here now after one week in the offseason, and we can see who we were able to sign back to the team or just sign onto the team to begin with. Dante Fowler rejected, so that's not a good start. But we did get Quentin Nelson, and we got Auden Tate. Quentin Nelson is massive. I think he's like a 99 overall, right? Is that what it said? He is a 99 overall. So that is fantastic. We have a 99 overall left guard. The offensive line is looking fierce. I guess aside from, I forget your first name, Dante Hodge and Andre Dillard. But maybe we can replace those guys in the draft here. I still haven't really scouted anybody. I usually just put it on auto scouting for this just since the entire season is simulated at once. But Auden Tate's actually going to be a nice acquisition to the team as well. Because he's still young, he's an 81 overall, he's certainly not a bad player. Honestly, if we get another receiver, I wouldn't mind him playing tight end. Because we still do need a tight end. Maybe I'll make that move at some point. I don't know. But it kind of sucks we didn't get Dante Fowler. We didn't really need him, but I also didn't give him like any money whatsoever. So if we got him on the team, I would have been happy. Let's see if anybody is still available here. We don't have like any money to spend right now. We have one and a half million dollars. But Tyron Matthew, you know, is still a really good player, but I'm not going to be able to afford him. I would love Tyler Lockett, but the Steelers are going after him heavily. Byron Jones wouldn't be too bad. The Steelers are also targeting him very heavily. Why did they give him Tyler Lockett 96 points? It's insane. Harold Landry is a player who's really good, but it's okay. DJ Reader, I don't really need. Micah Hyde? Wouldn't it be actually that bad instead of Avante Maddox? I don't know. Maybe I'll just slide him a contract. Actually, Kyle Rudolph or Darren Waller, I wouldn't mind sliding a contract to. Yeah, I'm going to do that with Darren Waller. Sam Hubbard, we actually are still the only team bidding on. So Darren Waller, I'm going to give a contract to if I can. It'll be a really tiny deal if possible. 37 points, that's fine. I don't really think we're going to be able to get any of these guys. But I wouldn't mind having him on the team because they're all pretty solid players. Actually, James Washington's available as well. He's not too bad. 
I can use more receiver help. I think I'm actually just going to look at the draft instead because I'd rather take a rookie anyway. And if anything, we have Arthago Whiteside and then Jalen Rager can be the slot receiver. Auden Tate, the number one of the two. That's fine. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm surprised the Lions are going after AJ Green and not James Washington. I think they had James Washington. I guess they got rid of him at some point. Okay, so I really can't go after anybody else, but I'll let you know who we end up getting. I think I'll probably see you guys again in the draft and I'll just kind of recap who we got during that time. All right, so really quickly before we actually get into the draft, I just want to make it known that we actually were able to get Darren Waller on the team. I don't really have footage of this, but you guys will see it at the start of next video. But we do have Darren Waller, which is actually a really big acquisition because he's very cheap and he's definitely not bad for at least a few more seasons. But let's get into the draft. So in this draft, we have the 20th pick in every round, except for the second where we also have the 19th pick. But in the first round, I was looking for a receiver primarily and Kerry Karstens looked like the best receiver at the moment. So we're going to select him in the first round. He's a 71 overall hidden development trait. He specializes in deep threat, but I think he will play the slot for us. Even though he doesn't have good short route running, I think I'm still going to make this work because the slot receiver gets targeted a ton in simulation. Now in the second round, like I said, we have two draft picks. We have the 19th and the 20th. With this pick, I accidentally took the wrong player. If I'm being completely honest, we ended up taking Wes Winter, who's not bad. He's a 68 overall normal development guard. I I don't think he's really going to see the field all that much, but like I just said, I took the wrong player. I didn't mean to take him, and I realized this right when I look at the draft board again, and notice that Morgan Nortman is still on the board. That's the guy I meant to take with this pick, and I was going to follow it up by taking Jabari Ingram because he actually looked pretty decent at defensive tackle, but I'm just looking at those other two defensive tackles before I decide to take the guy I meant to take a pick ago. So Morgan Nortman is going to be on the team. He actually looks like a really good prospect. He has B pluses across the board. He turns out to be a 69 overall hidden development trait. Now, I wish I had a defensive tackle to pair with this guy, kind of, because that would have actually helped the team out a lot in the long run, especially if one of those defensive tackles was like a high 60 with hidden, but it's okay. We're going to move on to the third round now, where I'm just checking out these cornerbacks, seeing if I want any of these guys right now. They're all projected to go in the third round. I eventually settle on David Cleveland, another offensive lineman, this time a 67 with hidden. So we have a lot of offensive lineman depth at the moment. A couple of hidden development guys from this draft, that other guy who's not hidden, but he's still not bad. And now in the fourth round, the 20th pick here once more, now I'm looking at these cornerbacks again. And I decide Richie McClellan looks very athletic, and I just went with him because I feel like at least he could be a good special teamer. He's a 66 overall, 91 acceleration, 91 agility. Definitely not bad for the fourth round. Now here in the fifth round, I'm just looking for somebody with a good combine grade. I decide to take Davon Miller, who is very fast, but that's about all he does. He has 86 speed. He's probably never going to, you know, see a starting opportunity on this team, but it's really not that big of a deal. In the fifth round, looking for, or the sixth round, sorry, looking for combine once again and I decide on Jerron Monroe you guys will see that in a second these guys all have pretty decent combine grades but why not fill out the offensive line even more so so we're gonna go ahead and take Jerron Monroe he turns out to be a 69 with hidden this guy was supposed to go in the second round and I landed him in the sixth round that was an incredible value pick I'm really happy with this one. He's probably going to get some starting time. So we're going to have to decide who to start out of those hidden development guys because we actually have some decent offensive lineman talent at the moment. But in the seventh round, I don't decide to actually take anybody. I just tell Lane he can just simulate by that pick if he wants to. But that is going to conclude this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this season. I think this team is on the up. Like I think we're going to make the playoffs sometime soon because we have some great talent. We have some really good young players, some great development traits to build behind. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.